Welcome to module eight. In this module, you will have an opportunity to practice the complicated and essential work of assessing student learning. In this video, I will discuss the what and the why of the application task. Then we will review the essential understandings, knowledge and skills from our learning that will prepare you to be masterful assessors of student learning. We'll jump back into the curriculum unpacking protocol that guided our previous application task from module five and set the stage for your application task in module eight. I will close by outlining the pre-work that will get you fully ready to engage in our assessment application task. Here are our learning objectives or the what for our work. You will understand that assessment is how we bridge the divide between teaching and learning. You will know assessments can be diagnostic, formative, or summative. You will be able to categorize assessments, evaluate assessments to identify their strengths and limitations, analyze connection and alignment between KUDs and assessment, and develop diagnostic, formative, and summative assessments to illuminate student learning. So why are we asking you to engage in an application task? We've chosen to give you an application task to work through the content because we want to give you a chance to show what you know, deepen your understanding, and practice what you can do. Hopefully by now, these three letters and concepts are familiar. Let's see them in action. Digging into assessments also takes practice. That's why we want to give you authentic practice that you can transfer to your school's site work. It's the gritty, invigorating work of teaching, so we want you to have that practice now. And guess what? This application task also serves as an assessment for learning. It's a formative performance assessment. So this application is going to give us, your instructors, evidence of your learning so we can adjust our teaching. So let's review. As we've started taking you through the backwards design process, unit one covered your work of determining what you teach and why. We closed out module five, where you practice using the cup to examine standards and develop KUDs. Now in unit two, we're grappling with the question of how do we know that our teaching has been successful? We're moving through that backwards design process to the work of determining assessment evidence. In module six, you learned the scary secret at the heart of teaching. Just because you teach something doesn't mean students learn it. Fortunately, we know that assessments bridge the gap between teaching and learning. We took an overarching look of how and why teachers collect evidence of understanding. We read about the guiding principles of assessment and the options for assessment type and purpose. We learned the importance of collecting and understanding achievement information so you can make better instructional decisions. In module seven, we focused on how assessments can be used as tools for communication that build student confidence as they watch themselves succeeding. We learned how to give feedback to students and families that was focused, appropriate, positive, and descriptive. Even your feedback can be aligned to a goal. As teachers, we must be conscious consumers of curricula, even, we're, even if we're presented with high quality resources, but especially if the resources our schools and states expect us to use are not high quality. We know unpacking curriculum can be daunting, so we've given you a possible procedure to follow, the Curriculum Unpacking Protocol, or CUP. We've modeled and you practiced the first portion of the CUP when we developed our KUDs. Now we're going to build upon that work as we tackle assessments. So here is an outline of the second portion of the curriculum unpacking protocol. All the steps that good teachers take to unpack their curriculum so they know that their teaching has been successful. The curriculum you are expected to teach will likely come with assessments. It's important that you understand these provided assessments in the same way you work to understand provided learning objectives. So the first step is to review the curriculum, taking a look at the unit, its provided assessments, and skim over the lesson plans to get the gist of what it is you'll be teaching. You can always refer back to part one of the curriculum unpacking protocol to review the steps that took you to developing your KUDs. Step two is identifying your assessment resources. Previous assessment resources, like your map growth data, state assessments, or VSOLs, can help you in two ways. If your students have completed these assessments, either in the previous year or at the beginning of the year, then you have some diagnostic data. You can dig into those assessments and see, based on the standards, what your students already know how to do and where possible gaps may be occurring. 
You can also look at these assessments to see how are nationally normed expectations for how these standards are being assessed. So what does it look like to be able to do this work on MAP? What does it look like to be able to do this work on state assessments? Our next step, of course, is to determine your standards. You're reviewing back to that alignment and the rigor that's expected when your students can perform at grade level. Step four is to complete your assessment. That's when you're actually going to sit down, pencil in hand, and work through the assessment your students are expected to do. As you're completing, you're reflecting using these questions. What are the different ways a student might answer this question? Are there multiple paths to a correct solution? If so, what are they? Asking these questions will help you prevent against teaching it just one way. You want to make sure that students are exposed to different uh, procedures and have the content understanding to be able to tackle these assessments with their own basis. You don't just want to teach them one, tasis, one way to solve an assessment. You also want to ask yourself as you're completing your assessment, what feels challenging and why? That can help you start to unpack possible uh, misconceptions that you'll want to address in advance and start thinking through if students have these wrong answers, how can I address them in the moment? So by the time we get to the summit of assessment, there's no confusion. And another important question is usually your curricula will also include answer keys. Comparing your work against the work of the answer key is helpful in two ways. The first is it helps provide, it helps provide uh, possible ways that you could go through the work that you might not have considered. And the other is it helps you understand clearly what exactly are the KUDs that I will have to teach to make sure my students can complete these assessments. Step five, you're gonna evaluate your objectives and your assessment. Hopefully one of the takeaways from this is you're gonna understand that your assessments will help you revise your objectives. When you sit down and take these assessments, you might understand that there are new Ks, Us, and Ds that you hadn't considered that you need to make sure you're teaching. Your objectives will also help you supplement your assessments. Maybe the assessments you've been given don't fully capture the K, U, and D that you know students will have to show if they're able to meet this standard. So you might think through, what do I need to supplement from the curriculum assessment to really capture the full scope of KUDs? Then, of course, you're going to review your work. And we have a little checklist here that helps you think through your KUD, think through uh, your assessments in the same way that we want you reflecting on your KUDs. Asking yourself, are students being asked to exhibit their understanding through authentic performance tasks? Are there scoring tools that allow me to evaluate my products and performances? So thinking about those rubrics. Various appropriate assessment formats used to provide additional evidence of learning. Are the assessments asking my kids to show their learning in just one way, or is there multiple formats? Does the assessment give me feedback for students and teachers in addition to just evaluation? And of course, are students encouraged to self-assess? Are we giving them opportunities to really own their learning? In the lesson planning template that you'll be using during your placements, you'll be expected to include assessments. Here's where you indicate if the provided assessments are diagnostic, formative, or summative, plus how you specifically plan to use them, adjust them, or supplement them. Note that UVA expects you to include at least one formative assessment in your lesson. Let me pause for a moment and just address one of the concerns about adjusting assessments. I want you to make sure that you're erring on the side of adding, not taking away. You are new teachers, and the worry that I have and that we have in this program is that by adjusting assessments, you may be doing more harm than good. Because you don't have the content knowledge yet to really understand what it is that you're teaching, plus assessments are often used by schools across grade level to compare students. So if you go in and make assessment adjustments, the first thing you have to ask yourself is, do I have permission? Do I have permission to go ahead and make these adjustments or is that not possible? The second thing that you wanna make sure you're doing is asking yourself, will my adjustments reduce the intellectual rigor? If I'm changing this assessment, am I not challenging my students enough? Am I gonna reduce their capacity to reach that full standard? And the third, of course, is do I have the content knowledge to make this adjustment? So I would caution you about doing anything that would take away assessment. You can always add more to it, but make sure that you're not reducing that challenge for students. A great thing to consider in your first year is if you have questions about the assessments you're being asked to give, can you flag that for yourself 
So when you come back next year, you can review where you had questions and then be ready to make possible adjustments. In the module eight application task, we're gonna be returning to Crozet Elementary. We'll be using the curriculum unpacking protocol to evaluate four assessments that our third grade math team is expected to use. Three assessments will be from just one lesson and the uh, final will be the uh, assessment from the whole unit. Our pre-work will be to actually complete the four assessments yourself. For each assessment, you'll determine if it's diagnostic, formative or summative. Then for each of the assessments, you'll think through how to solve, if there are different ways students could approach each problem and what potential challenges students may face with each assessment. Finally, you'll compare your work to the answer key provided in the curriculum. In the next video, I will model for you how I would use the cup to unpack assessments and the relationships between assessments and KUDs.